one of the largest Muslim populations is Indonesia. And there is no evidence historically to suggest that Muslims ever entered that country with the sword. It was rather the akhlaq and the sterling qualities that Muslims had adopted and people were able to witness that allowed people to be influenced by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi by the deen of Islam. And this is my dear respective brothers and sisters, our responsibility as Muslims. We have a lot of decency to give the people. We have so many examples from the seerah of Rasulullah's justice, Rasulullah's ability to make peace. When we look at the incident before his nubuwa, when one man was being wronged and oppressed, the Prophet ﷺ entered Hilful Fudul. And this was a way for the Prophet ﷺ to stand up for justice for those that are wronged, for the downtrodden in society. And he looked back at that incident and said that if I had an opportunity to enter such a treaty after Islam, I would do so again and again and again. When we look at Rasulullah ﷺ's incident in Ta'if, when the people had beaten him and the Prophet ﷺ was given an option by Allah to crush the people, Rasulullah ﷺ said, فَإِنَّهُمْ قَوْمِي Allah, they are my people, they don't know. فَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Forgive them, they don't know. Perhaps somebody from them shall become a Muslim later on. When we look at the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah, Whilst Umar anhu viewed this as a disadvantage for Muslims, the Prophet wasallam had foresight and he was prepared to agree on a treaty. In fact, at that time, the person who the Quraysh had sent, Suhail bin Amr, he said, don't write Muhammad Rasulullah on that treaty because we don't recognize you as Rasulullah. And Ali radiallahu anhu became upset and Rasulullah wasallam agreed and said, write whatever they agree to write. This is another example of the Prophet ﷺ displaying sterling qualities in the face of hardship and challenges. We know that the Prophet ﷺ eliminated racism from the ranks. He elevated the status of Bilal ibn Abi Rabah radiallahu anhu by making him the Mu'addin, by also citing that he heard his footsteps in paradise. This eliminated the roots of sectarianism, the roots of racism within the Muslim community. This is the beauty and the decency that Islam has to give the people. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ took with him to Medina Munawwara. This is what the companions learnt from him. And this is what they established, my dear respected brothers and sisters. The learning of seerah is so important. Even something what we may view as a small thing. The Prophet ﷺ being selected to work as a shepherd has so many lessons in it. And the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was a shepherd of sheep, this in itself has four or five lessons to learn from it. And these are the lessons we learn when we study seerah closely with the lens of amal, with the lens of ibrah, with the lens of being productive and not just storytelling, my dear respected brothers and sisters. When we look at Rasulullah ﷺ after the story of the Fatah Mecca, the liberation of Mecca, when the Prophet is returning victoriously to his town, he has the opportunity to take revenge against the people that became a thorn and obstacle in his path of da'wah for so many years. Yet, when Rasulullah was in this advantageous position, he did not take revenge, but he said, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم Just as Yusuf والسلام, had said to his brothers, يغفر الله لكم Allah forgive you for your injustices. You guys are free, you can go. This is the Prophet ﷺ's akhlaq and his great khuluq. We learn from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah never once said to me, why didn't you do this? Or why did you do it like this? 10 years he served the Prophet ﷺ. Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ is praising him. How many of us can say that our wives will publicly praise us or say good things about us. Rasulullah's wife Aisha anha, is saying that he was a very decent person. He wouldn't shout in the, in the marketplace. He was a refined person with good qualities. This is how we are going to influence the people. When we truly teach the decency of Islam, Many people that came into the fold of Islam in the 60s and 70s were influenced by the writings of Malik Shabazz, Malcolm X, 
Because Malik Shabazz told people and he wrote that Islam has the solutions for the breakdown in society, for the injustices in society, for the institutional racism we see in society. Islam has the solutions to bring people up, to create a balance in the society, to give people their rights.